Now, how does covetousness play into this? Again, covetousness, or the greed of wanting to do your own thing when God has specifically commanded us to take a day and set it apart wholly unto Him. We see the violation of the Sabbath all the time. One of the main sins of Israel while they were exiled was because they would not honor the Sabbath. They did business on the Sabbath. They were greedy to get that gain. And so in order to get that money and to get that gain, they decided to work on the Sabbath instead of resting and having a solemn assembly as God had called them to do. Therefore, their greed and their covetousness, just like ours today, we can violate the commandments of breaking the Sabbath. The second and third commandments, we can roll them into one. It says, you shall not make a carved image or likeness of God, and you shall not bow down to them. It's no secret that whatever we covet more than fellowship with God is our God. The covetousness there causes us to forsake the fellowship of God to pursue after other vanities of this world. And then lastly, the first commandment. You shall have no other God before me. We could have kind of rolled this into the second and third commandments, but I left this by itself for a reason. Worshiping other gods is called idolatry. We know that. But I want you to listen very carefully to what the Apostle Paul says in Colossians 3, 5. He says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and get this, this is what he says, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Paul knew that the sin of covetousness led to idolatry. When we break that first commandment by having another God before us, we break them all. That first commandment, keeping that first commandment, keeping that relationship with God, if that is not done, then all the other commandments will fall apart. In fact, James chapter 2, verse 14, James tells us that if we stumble just in one area of the law, then we're held accountable for all of it. It's like we've broken all of it. Let us then examine our own hearts and be alert for the sin of covetousness in our lives. Now, as noted earlier, it was a sin and a pure greed which caused Satan his fall. It was also the sin which caused the demise of the Ephraimites in our text. They were greedy for gain, or they were greedy for something. Whether they wanted to share in the glory, or whether they wanted to share in the spoils, they were greedy for something, they coveted that, and it caused their own demise. But I do want to say something else about covetousness. If covetousness is about self, which it is, then that means selflessness is about the other person. And this is exactly what Jesus demonstrated for us in his own sacrifice. Even though the Bible tells us that he was grieved to the point of death, he told his disciples, I am sorrowful to the point of death. We're told in Luke that he was so grieved that he sweated great drops of blood. Even though he may have desired to escape the cross that was before him, Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. By submitting himself to God and doing what God had wanted him to do, he overcame that desire. He overcame that even which caused him sorrow almost to the point of death. But there is one more parallel that I'd like to make before we close. I said that the height of covetousness was usually ended up in murder, death. But also when we look at the height of selflessness, that is, which is a good thing, selflessness is a good thing, it also ends in death. The former 
is shown how it is played out, particularly in James chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. You remember James is writing to the church there, and he says, What causes quarrelings among you? What causes wars and murders and strife? He says, It's because you covet or you desire what you do not have. And so because you don't have it, you go to war with each other. Yet, the latter, selflessness, the death of that, can be seen in John chapter 15, verse 13. And you remember Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. How awesome is that thought? That we could be so selfless rather than so covetousness that we would be willing to give our lives for the brethren. John again points this out in 1 John when he says, If God so loved us that he, gave down his, that he laid down his life for us, we too ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. You see, that kind of death is the height of selflessness. Whereas covetousness, the height of that, is about self and harms another. So this morning, let us be like Christ and show that perfect example to one another in selfless love rather than in selfish covetousness.